I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming and I did it again. I have clearly got a problem as I have built another virtual pinball machine and this time I went pinball 2000 styles. But why do anything part way, am I right? With the help of Zeb himself, this puppy is tricked out. Loaded to the bells. Pimped. Full haptics, not only will you feel the ball bounce around the table and feel the flippers, nicky knack, flippity flip flipper. What sound do flippers make? Click, click, clack. Follow me on my adventure, because it's go time. This is obviously not my first virtual pinball machine build, but if this is the first time you've seen something like this and you're wondering what I mean, super quick explanation. A virtual pinball machine is an emulated or software driven machine that uses the real ROMs and software from the actual physical pinball machines and emulates the lights, ball, movement, physics, flippers, bumpers and everything else that makes pinball pinball using a hybrid of real pinball parts, a 4K television, and a computer beefy enough to do the aforementioned. Or honestly, you can just do this on your computer. There is no cabinet needed. I'm not going to get into the virtual pinball versus real pinball, as I'm a believer that all pinball players and all pinball lovers can live in peace and coexist beside each other. What I am gonna say is there is no way I myself can afford the $14,000 US price point of a new machine. And if I wanna own even a couple of my all-time favorites like Twilight Zone or Adam's Family, Whirlwind, Deadpool, the list goes on and on. Well, that's just not doable. So long story short, I can put as many tables as I want into one virtual machine and have a blast playing either by myself or with friends. There is no limit to how many tables I can, well, there's a hard drive limit if we're gonna count that. So I did that in another video. And you can see in that video, I chopped up an existing cabinet to make it play all kinds of games, all kinds of tables. I also get into more detail about the software of VPX, Future Pinball, Pinball FX. But what if, and hear me out, we go fancy. And I am not just talking one pinky up in the air with a monocle and funny smelling cheese. What if we not only see everything playing in front of us, but want to feel it too. That's where this video comes in. This, my internet friends, is just such an adventure. Now I could have started by trying to find another pinball cabinet that had given up the ghost, but I've had a taste of virtual pinball and I have always been curious about the Pinball 2000 cabinets as they are super unique. The trick there would of course been finding a dead pin 2K machine and I am not a patient man. Plus, if I build it myself from scratch, I could tweak the dimensions a little bit and make it a perfect fit for the 43 inch 4K playfield screen. Couple of sheets of hardwood plywood later and some printing up of the odd R shaped head of the cabinet. Again, making sure that everything fit my monitor and 4K TV perfectly. A lot of cutting, a lot of glue, a lot of rotoring and ordering of some specific parts. Yeah, I used real pin 2000 buttons and they work fantastic as they come with built-in MagnaSave. Some team molding pinball legs, coin door, and my cabinet rose out of the sawdust like some glorious wooden thing of beauty. I know, I'm a real wordsmith. Now I don't want to bore you with the details. Needless to say, I decided I would put the computer in the head of the cabinet behind the back glass. I learned since last time to go case-free so I just 3D printed little feet for the motherboard as well as support for the video card. I also installed a 120 millimeter Noctua fan directly to the center top of the head to make sure that the system wouldn't get too warm and would be properly vented. I installed a monitor for the DMD or the part that shows the scores and objectives and angled it back slightly with the 4K playfield screen coming up to about the halfway mark. So as to make the DMD look as realistic as possible and hiding the bottom half under the table. I had considered mounting a DMD under the head 
and reversing the image to show up on the playfield glass, but in the end opted to have it under the glass with the playfield. Maybe next time. I also installed the headphone jack at the front of the cabinet in case I want to hear everything without bothering anyone else. And I also hard mounted a four port USB hub on the one side to make it easy in case I want to add more tables or use a USB stick or wired keyboard and mouse. All about making life easier. I programmed a KL25Z board which converts all your button presses to keyboard or joystick inputs and soldered all of my buttons up to it as well as installed a little vertical menu button for when you open the coin door to access the pinball volume system. So that has like four buttons that I can play around with. I even screwed micro switches to the inside of the coin door right behind the coin reject button for adding credits. Mounted it with some black pinball legs, ordered custom playfield glass and 3D printed a lockdown bar to the exact size of the cabinet. I mounted a speaker under the head, pointed right at me, and it was time for the toys. Now there are lots of ways to do this, and Zeb's boards is just one option. What I love, and I do mean love, about Zeb's easy install kit is just how easy it is to get everything up and going. And on top of that, how easy it is to add more toys. It comes with a USB stick that has a PDF to help you do your config, as well as finding port numbers and such, and it makes the install process much easier. The Easy Install Kit expands to the width of the inside of your cabinet. The side rails are powered, so you just mount solenoids directly to it, which are not included. But you decide how many you want, and it supports up to 10. You mount it level, and everything just works. Of course, if it supports 10, I wanted 10. I used hot rod starter solenoids. So not only do they fire off for each flipper press, but the bumpers on the table, the slingshots, good grief, everything fires off when the ball hits it and they all fire off from different directions on the table. And all the cables are labeled, so you just connect them and you're done. But that, my friends, is just the beginning. There is also a knocker that lets you know you got a free play. You know the one, the little heart attack noise if you match after you're done playing and it just snaps. I've also got a shaker, which is really just a motor that is unbalanced, that as I learned the hard way, you need to turn down in the configuration by default. As my neighbors may have heard it the first time it went off, like, three houses down. It simulates a rumble inside the cabinet that is all kinds of cool. And speaking of cool, you know how the top or the head of the Pinball 2000 cabinet kind of has like a dark space between itself and the glass? I thought to myself, self, wouldn't it be cool if you put a high pressure fan in there for games that use a fan? And so I did. So easy to wire to the Zebs boards, easy install kit, but I was deeply disappointed with how much wind it moved. I wanted to feel my hair blown back from the winds of the ACDC cannons, and especially the games specifically designed for fans, like Whirlwind or Twister. And it was just... it was okay. Remember when I said I don't do things halfway? Well, I purchased another fan and mounted them both under the hood, as it were. The second fan was crazy noisy, however, so I called Louis up as he actually has an extensive background in electrical and explained the noise. He mentioned a lot of the same things I had considered, but as it's a sealed unit designed to be used in boats, in fact, there was no way for me to pull it apart. In passing, he asked if I was 100% sure it wasn't wired backwards. I assured him the other fan was wired exactly the same, and I double-checked that they were both wired the same. Guess what? I wired them both backwards. Now, it's a little like standing in a tornado when they kick in, and I freaking love it. I also installed a plug and play light bar from Zebs with strobes that not only does it add tons to the visual effects, but because of the angle of the glass, I catch the reflection of the lights off of it over the DMD, and it is full on trippy. If you have never used DOF or direct output framework before, it can be a bit daunting. However, once I started using the easy install kit from Zeb, I just wanted to add more and more toys. I wired up LED light strips that change color based on the game underneath the table and considered running lights inside the table as well. But as it's already a freaking light show taking place and in the end, I don't want anything to take away from the gameplay, I only want to enhance it. So for now, I've decided against it. I did purchase an LED police strobe to mount on the top. And after a quick addition to the DOF config, it works flawlessly. Just don't look directly at it as it will burn out your retinas. Now all those toys and accessories are neat on their own, but when triggered by the pinball game itself, exactly when they should be, it is magical. I am glad I haven't kept track of how many hours I spent on this build, but there is clearly something wrong with me, as I would totally do it again. In fact, I'm about three quarters done building an old school wedge head virtual pinball machine. I am going to have to sell some of these as my house is only so big, Plus, I don't know if I'll run out of money or space first, 
but there are still more pinball machines and different things I want to try. But this pin 2K cabinet has a special place in my heart. I love how the back glass is brought closer by the design. I love how the sound comes from the underside where the lights dance and the fan blows the skin off of your face. Those are all things that I love. I try and not beam with pride when I show this to my friends, but gall darn it, I am proud of this creation. And thanks to Zeb and his mighty boards, I am no longer scared to experience virtual pinball with all of the bells and whistles. Plus, if I ever decide to turn on all the toys or all of them off, I can do that with the press of a button so as to either not wake up the neighbors or other people in the house, except the fans. I love those fans, those fans have to stay on. So thank you for listening to my madman's rambling. This won't be my last video. As I said, I'm three quarters done my next cabinet. If you have any questions, I am always glad to help. I am by no means an expert, but I will talk to you again really, really soon. See ya.